Good evening and welcome to everyone to our Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings call. Let me start by uh, first wishing all of you a, 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 a greeting for the festive season and happy deep hours. I'm joined by my colleagues as mentioned by Gavin, Zari Langrana and Nandu. I will start the discussion with key operational highlights across business and geography, after which our CFO will walk you through the financial performance for the quarter. Overall, amongst the markets where we have sizable presence, India and US were stable. There was softness in some segments of the market, especially in container glass. Our prices have remained subdued with new supplies coming from China, or at least the new supplies being announced out of China. There has been a bit of a slowdown spillover from China into other markets. Overall, in the medium term, we look uh, the outlook for Sodash remains uh, stable, backed by demand from sustainability sectors like uh, solar, PV, and lithium. As far as the, our company is concerned, we have maintained our market shares in key markets through uh, active customer engagement. Our cash generation was better as with working better working capital. Our focus in uh, some of the markets like in UK will remain that we focus on high value added bicarb and pharma salt. And we will continue to focus on operation excellence to ensure our margins are protected. We have uh, repaid uh, debt of US dollar 120 million in the overseas units in the first half of the year. Our CapEx program or will continue as planned for the project which are already underway. And the future programs will focus or uh, focus continue to focus on deep bottlenecking with a very high capital efficiency. Uh, moving on to Dallas, their quarterly performance was better than previous quarter in spite of challenging environment. As compared to corresponding quarter last year, revenue did decline by 12% due to subdued performance of the international market, but domestic market remained stable. EBITDA of quarter was higher by 14% and Rallis approach to ensure right level of placements reflected in improved collections. To conclude, we believe core fundamentals of our main business, Sodash, continues to remain steady. We expect medium-term demand supply situation to remain stable. While we are scaling up capacities of our core business by almost a million ton, cost-effectively, mainly through deep bottlenecking, we remain very much focused on management excellence, debt repayment and strengthening our cash flows. Our endeavor is to ma maintain our customer engagements at high level to ensure market uh, position and continue to have steady contribution with focus on excellence. That concludes my opening remarks. I now hand over the floor to Nandu who will take you through financial performance. Thanks Mukundan and good day everyone. Let me walk you through a financial performance afterwards we'll get the Q&A. Q Starting with the headline numbers for the quarter, our revenue over for the quarter was at uh, 3998 crores, down 6% compared to last year's Q2. Decrease in revenue was driven by lower uh, soda ash volumes and contribution being impacted both mainly in India and Kenya. EBITDA for the quarter was at 819 crores as against 920 crores in the last year's Q2, 11% lower. PAC for the quarter was 495 crores, lower by 28% uh, compared to last year's Q2 which also has a 100, 102 crores of exceptional gain booked in the quarter on account of a reversal of provision on, on, on account of a long pending entry tax issue we had with the government. Moving to each business, with, starting with India, revenue for the quarter was 166 crores. Sodash volumes were up 4% compared to last year's Q2. Pricing was lower because of which we had lower revenues compared to last year's. Salt business performed well and clogged their steady volumes. Bicups saw good volumes too as compared to last year. Moving to US, uh, business continued to benefit from better pricing during the quarter. A better margins was at 24% for the current quarter. In the UK business, revenue was impacted as compared to last year's Q2 to lower volumes and led by lower uh, revenue was 7% in the current quarter. A better was at 19% for the current quarter. As far as Kenya is concerned, both the volumes and relations were softening, which in turn impacted margins and profits for the quarter. As far as Kidika and Utah is concerned, both the businesses have, growth, have a growth map in front of them. With time and investments, we expect both segments to clock in consistent numbers going forward. Moving on to Rallis, revenues for the quarter was 833 crores, 12% down compared to last year's Q2. EBITDA was 135 crores, 14% higher than last year's Q2. PAC 81 crores against last year's 71 crores, up 
our cash process cash act accounts was 1701 crores in, in september capex was 418 crores net debt was 4347 crores on account of dividend outflow capex uh, etc with that i close the comments and hand it over back to uh, gavin to open up for q and a thank you yes i hope you enjoy thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of vivek rajumani from mortgage stanley please go ahead um hi sir um thank you for the presentation and happy diwali to you and the team uh two questions from my side uh could you just talk a bit about the us uh volumes uh, have not recovered back to the normal levels uh, this quarter and it also appears that the pricing for exports which are more levered to spot have corrected quite a bit so we just give us some color of what's happening there and how we should think about this going forward and the second question i had was more specifically on china uh, please give us some color on you know what's the demand supply situation in china um i asked this because we we did see a rally in spot prices in china a couple of months back and recently we've again seen a very sharp decline so any color on what's happening on the ground would also be very helpful thank you thank you i think let, let me first start with china i think in china the uh, the basic uh, market issue was that there was a new supply coming in from inner mongolia and uh, uh, which in in anticipation of which many customers had uh, delayed uh, purchases and they were hoping that prices would uh, correct but unfortunately or let's say the, those uh, disturbances did not happen in china it seemed more stable than what uh, the market participants would have uh, thought should happen uh, the china inventory uh, actually fell to a very low level from a, a, a approximately 3 lakh tons it had fallen down to something like uh, uh, yeah 2.7 lakh tons and it is now up a little bit so really uh, the, the issue in uh, uh, china in our view is that uh, chinese market has remained a bit range bound Uh, and uh, really the spillover in the uh, international markets uh, of volumes have not happened uh, okay. that does not mean that it could not happen we'll keep a close watch on this and uh, uh, the other angle in china was about the demand uh, situation within china which has remained uh, slightly soft a lot of measures by government and you would be reading this across sectors in the general uh, 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 news too and uh, the real impact of that we will wait and watch and see if you look at broad numbers we think china numbers in terms of volume uh, uh, compared to last year are about 3% up that is the overall number which we have uh, done the calculation uh, but uh, uh, re- reality uh, is that we need to keep a close watch on china so really the news from china is the anticipated uh, uh, disturbance the market did not uh, follow through uh, it was uh, it, it was more uh, soft and what we had thought it would be in terms of the uh, uh, your question was on the us market volumes right yeah so in terms of us market volumes i think uh, in terms of domestic market share i think we have more or less protected our domestic market share overall in the market i i, I think the pressure as you rightly identified was on the export market uh, where i think the prices have broadly uh, uh, tended down from the previous quarter from previous year the export pricing is more or less same but from the previous quarter they've tended down approximately by 50 60 dollars per ton and we anticipate that will be the stable number going forward so it is back to what it was uh, the previous year same quarter so i hope that sort of uh, explains the current market situation uh, uh, ramesh vivek so vivek sorry um thank you so much sir so just one small clarification before i join the queue uh do you expect the volumes in the us to go back to you know the 600 kiloton level or you think this is going to be a more normalized number going forward 
Actually, the domestic market in U.S. Uh, is, has been fairly stable except for some uh, softness in container glass. Uh, and uh, the, the, the real impact in the U.S. has been the export uh, market uh, where uh, I, I think the, the South American market we do expect will remain stable, but I think the big issue we need to watch out for is the Southeast Asian market. So I don't want to make an immediate commentary. We are watchful. Uh, if things turn out benign, then I think it will be back to normal, uh, the volumes we said. Otherwise, it will tend towards what we are having in this quarter. Sure, sir. Thank you so much and all the very best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening and thank you very much. So, in terms of the Inner Mongolia capacity addition, uh, what is the latest number we have in terms of confirmed capacity addition this year? And uh, will we see the entire 5 million uh, capacity being added in the next uh, two months? So, the public news is that the uh, entire 5 million may come on stream this year. This, when, I, when I say this year, that is March, uh, uh, 30, 31st March 24. But we, we think more realistically, it is likely to be close to about 3 million. 3 million, okay. The second thing is, uh, if you see the India performance, uh, the margins are under pressure. So what is the reason for the weak performance in India? Because that's the world we can understand. Uh, but India, we thought the Hindu segments, uh, including property and automobiles are doing well. So how much, uh, and we, last time we told that there is a certain amount of overhang from increased exports from Turkey and the supply or in China. So, uh, how much of that is still persisting in terms of channel stock and B consumption and uh, when do you see this recover? So, really, uh, the issue in India is not so much the demand. Uh, Ramesh, I think you, are, you rightly pointed out, India is actually probably the bright star in demand side. So, Indian market, we don't think it is a demand, we don't see it as a demand issue, but certainly Indian market has suffered from heavy increase in imports uh, Indian imports, which were broadly around, let's say, 14 to 14 of 13 or 14 percent of the total sales, that has doubled to close to 27, 28 percent. So the real change has been the imports landing in India, mainly from Turkey, and that, that has impacted the pricing because they've landed at unreasonable, let's say, pretty low prices, and that has tended to pressure the market prices overall. So we do think this is a phenomenon which. Uh, is, uh, let's say, very specific uh, for this market. And uh, uh, we, we do think that over a period of time, it will correct itself. Uh, if you ask me, has it reached the bottom? Uh, in my view, uh, we, whether we've reached the bottom or not, very clear to me, but it, we are very close to bottom. If I might squeeze in a last question on UK and Kenya. Kenya margins have really come down sharply. So is this the margin which we can expect going forward or is there some scope for recovery in the Kenya margins and similarly in UK? I think uh, in Kenya, you, the way we would certainly uh, say is that uh, the current margins which are trending would probably be the normal margins going forward because bulk of their exports is, is to India and Southeast Asia and those numbers more or less would uh, tend to be around the same figure going forward. Okay, thank you very much and uh, join the team. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Sir, as earlier alluded by you that uh, UK, UK will be moving to now the part and profitability structure. So current numbers for UK uh, can be penciling in uh, this is now the new normal for uh, the UK numbers or what should be our understanding? Certainly, I, I would say in bicarb and in salt, uh, these numbers would reflect themselves. In terms of soda ash, while we have tended to maintain constant margin, and that probably will hold true for Q, uh, Q3 of this fiscal year and Q4 of the calendar year, you have to wait for a commentary from us exactly where the margins will settle for us the next uh, contract period next year. So we are still in the process of going through the negotiation. So. I'm not able to sort of comment whether it will remain stable or move around a little bit uh, up or down, but we'll come back to you on that. But bicarbonate salt will remain more or less stable. So it is really the soda ash one which we need to sort of uh, 
manage for the new contracting period starting from Jan to December. And answer for the CO2 program which we have con uh, conducted through the, the aid of the UK government, the benefits of the same are now fully accrued and this is going to be uh, pertinent now? Yeah, I think the bicarbonate plant actually completely utilizes the carbon capture uh, unit. In fact, it is, uh, it is a zero, really close to net zero kind of a situation for our bicarb production. So, it is a green product and it is finding uh, very good customer traction. Sir, so as you mentioned rightly that the contracts will be renewable, the annual contracts for uh, in the next month. So, the outlook for U.S. also... Well, uh, you would be able to share post uh, uh, the, the Q3 numbers. The, that would give us an, uh, uh, an uh, assumption how the next year is going to shape up. Is that would be a better understanding for U.S. market also since there is a lot of volatility currently in the soda uh, market. So that will have an impact on our contracts uh, with we have annual contracts for U.S. also. Correct. I think we'll be able to share with you in Q3. I can only tell you that the teams are working hard to close out all contracting and it is moving in the right direction. Okay, so last point was on the global conference on soda acid that happened in the month of October. If you could uh, enlighten us with uh, what's the global scenario shaping up uh, currently and uh, what's the feedback in terms of uh, the demand outlook globally, if you could give some more color on, on the thing and then I'll join the queue, sir. I think one big theme from all customers in that conference was from the focus on sustainability. I think all customers are looking to the carbon reduction program, the big ones, the global ones. I think that that's one of the key teams running. So uh, the uh, chemical companies which are able to demonstrate a move towards a lower carbon footprint would continue to benefit with greater customer traction. To that extent, our units in uh, U.S., which has a lower carbon footprint, as well as the one in U.K., do benefit. Kenya is also very low carbon footprint. Uh, it is in India. We need to address that by, uh, you know, by what we have committed, which is 30% reduction. That's one broad trend right across. The, the second uh, trend is there is a uh, continued belief and bullishness about the applications like solar and the lithium carbonate. They're going to continue to be the dri drivers of growth. Uh, the, uh, the other traditional sectors... Uh, I think we will have to wait for the macroeconomics to correct. So, fundamentally, how the real estate market behaves and how the, uh, let's say, the uh, automotive sector behaves, which will drive a flat class. In terms of container glass, it has been a bit of a surprise for all of us that the market demand has softened. Traditionally, this, this segment has held up. So, we will have to wait and watch what has led to this, uh, especially in terms of both uh, wine and uh, beer consumption. Uh, Usually should hold up, but uh, it is seeing it's seeing a it, it, there's been a reduction in the uh, container glass demand. But uh, we don't have a, a clarity on the what the way it will trend. So I think we will want to watch uh, very closely. So these are the broad uh, lessons to glean from the uh, Soda Ash conference. Uh, certainly, uh, I, I think in terms of uh, supply side, uh, all the companies are focused on uh, improving their core offering to customers by reducing carbon. And uh, most companies are also focused on making sure that their uh, cost competitiveness continues to improve more supply. That is what they are focused on. Right, right, sir. I joined the queue. I have two questions. May I ask now or join the queue? You can ask now. Yeah, you can ask now. Yes, sir. For, sir, for the finance cost, sir, we see that on a consolidated basis, our finance costs have gone up by 100 crore. Whereas uh, you have also alluded to the fact that we have re reduced our debt on the U.S. Uh, uh, unit by $100 million. So what's the debt on the U.S. counterpart currently and why have the uh, finance costs gone up? Actually, the borrowing cost is uh, almost, uh, the interest rates have uh, increased uh, dramatically. Uh, they have more than doubled. Something you want to clarify? Yeah. So, you see, we have loans in the U.K., Singapore and U.S. So all of our UK and Singapore debts got refinanced about a year back in December last year. So those came at a much higher rate than what we took earlier. So last year's Q2 had an earlier rate taken a long time back at 1% uh, LIBOR. So therefore this rate difference of 5% on the loans in Singapore and uh, UK is the reason for the increase in interest rate. Otherwise we are repaying debt and therefore that is, uh, that is resulting in a lower increase over last year. So broadly it is uh, refinancing done but we uh, uh, entered debt in the UK and Singapore last year, in December. 
and this is the ratio very high so what, what is the debt on us currently after the repayment uh uk uh, us would be around uh, what would be cost 200 and i just told them and the next point would be on sodium bicarbonate use on for flu gas treatment what kind of incremental demand uh, are we anticipating with the uh, with the implementation of flu gas treatment at the uh, power plant i think so tata power is also uh, contemplating a uh, lot of initiative on this basis so uh, how is this uh, this going to shape up and uh, the outlook on the thing it's a growing sector and we are very much uh, focused on that sector too Very yeah, I think you're right. Uh, <laughs> certainly, in India, we've seen over the last 12 months increased uh, demand from this sector, primarily from one of the uh, uh, San India players. You're right. Tata Power is also looking at it. Our estimate is that it will continue to grow at about 10 to 12 percent per annum, but in a phased manner as each utility takes up each of the plants separately. So it's certainly moved from a pilot phase. to a commercial phase as far as the utilities are concerned and on the previous question in terms of the debt in us it is 258 billion dollars in us overall 728 is the overall uh, debt we have uh, on the on the whole 258 is us and uh, 150 million pounds is in uk 182 million dollars is in singapore broad that's a breakup right sir thank you sir uh, i i join the queue sir Thank you and all the best to the team sir and should be public. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mithil from unlistedindia.com please go ahead. Uh yeah so my first question is like for the additional capacity that's going to come on stream uh, do we have uh, the contracts uh, ready for it like uh, to take away for the new stream? Yeah I think the first additional stream is going to come as the uh, uh the the salt capacities are coming on stream i think that that uh, more or less is uh, uh fully booked with uh, uh, with our contract with our consumer and on the soda ash uh, about 0.25 uh, is uh, 250000 tonnes coming on stream which we are very confident the indian market with its growth would uh, take that i think there is uh, we we have uh, a full confidence on that the additional capacities we are bringing on um, in makadi about uh, uh, uh Two hundred thousand ton, and in uh, US about four hundred thousand ton. I think those uh, we are very confident because of the cost competitiveness of both these sites. But they they are they are about two two and a half years away, and uh, the current year the capacity is coming is only in India. So my uh, second question is on the growth front. Like, uh, what is Sada Chemicals planning to have a to be on a very high growth front? Uh, Like our sister companies, our Tata uh, Power and Tata Motors. So if you see in soda ash and uh, salt, uh, the capacity expansion is also uh, is very moderate. So what is Tata Capital planning to you know grow aggressively? Yeah. So in terms of the uh, uh, organic growth, uh, Mithil, uh, our yeah. plans are exactly what I mentioned that uh, we uh, we will be bringing on about thirty. Uh, 30% more capacity in uh, uh, in uh, our silica unit 300000 ton 3000 ton and it will further go through doubling of capacity uh, in phase 2 for which we are uh, we should start the process of construction in about a month's time uh, after getting the uh, consent to establish from the tamil nadu government as far as uh, the soda ash is concerned it will go to a million ton in india and the uh, salt will go to 1.5 Beyond that, the next phase it takes the salt capacity to 1.8 billion tons, and uh, also the uh, uh, soda ash capacity to 1.3 million ton in India. That is about two and a half years away, and in US about 400,000 ton additional, and in uh, Kenya about 200,000 additional. Those capacities will be also around two and a half years to three years away. So we 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 will be adding capacities in a lumpy manner. Uh, but uh, they have to go through execution phase, and uh, uh, that's that's the way the business is. Anything on the inorganic front, sir? Like, because these numbers look okay. very small, actually, uh, in the overall context of things. That's right. Yeah, we will continue to look for opportunities. If anything fructifies, we'll come back to you. 
the sector is uh, having interesting opportunities. We are on the lookout for it. Thank you. Thank you. Our uh, next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much again. So, if you were to look at the current consumption, what is the current consumption in million ton? And what is the kind of growth you expect in consumption of soda ash over the next uh, one to two years? And what is the visible capacity addition you expect in the next one to two years other than the Inner Mongolia capacity? So, <clears throat> over one to two years, other than Inner Mongolia, we aren't seeing anything substantial on the horizon. Anything substantial that's been talked about has been talked about in the 2027-2028 time frame. So, capacity-wise, we don't see too much coming up other than some usual D bottlenecks. Uh, demand side, historic global demand growth rates have been in the region of two and a half, three percent. Today, it's much softer. If the traditional sectors go back to their original growth rate, we should see those kind of numbers appearing once again. Oh, yeah. If you look at yeah, if you look at the glass sector, like in Asahi glass was reported a very weak number. So, is there a challenge? One while you said that the demand is okay, is there a you know kind so, of softening of the trend in terms of so, uh, you know Indian glass sector? Uh, how is the demand trend in India? So, Indian glass sector, I think the demand trend is good. Perhaps the domestic players are. Being yeah. So, uh, Ramesh, I was only addressing. The, uh, I don't know whether you heard what Zari mentioned that. Uh, in glass, the main issue, volume growth is continuing. There is no issue on that. It's mainly the pricing pressure, and pricing pressure mainly coming from imports from China and from Malaysia. And, you know, in uh, with, with Malaysia, India has a free trade uh, agreement, and that does create issues for glass players from time to time. Okay. And uh, lastly, can you give us the uh, CapEx uh, for FI 25 and 26 and 27, since you have lined up all the expansion? Yeah, just, just hold on, we'll just give you the number. Uh, uh, can we go to the next question? We'll get, get you the number. Yeah, I, think she... yeah, I am done with that one. Thank you, that. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, the first question oh, is, talk, um, Mr. Nagar, if we request you to use the answer, please, for audio quality. Uh, is it better? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question is on Turkey. So, what is the differential in terms of the imports from Turkey and the local prices? And an allied question to that, uh, given that China demand is relatively lower, so, are there any exports happening from China? Thank you. So, let me <clears throat> let me take the second question first. Uh, China was exporting till about four months ago. The market then suddenly tightened domestically, and Chinese exports came down. Uh, at the moment, it is not back to the historical levels, but as Inner Mongolia production starts appearing into the market and into the domestic market primarily to start with, uh, you might see exports increasing out of China, but uh, we have to see how that plays out. Uh, the second question, the uh, differential between domestic pricing and Turkish import pricing uh, would, I think, vary market to market and customer to customer. Uh, obviously, domestic pricing is at a premium to import pricing, and we believe that differential will continue to see. Right. And uh, any specific reasons for uh, high imports coming from Turkey? I mean, are the uh, uh, prices in terms of the energy, energy costs, etc., have come down uh, dramatically, and or there is constraint from the economy side, and they are just pushing the volume? So, any thoughts on this? Yeah, I don't think uh, energy costs have come down. In fact, energy costs may have gone up. I think really the large impact may, may be, we believe, due to the fact that some of the core markets in Europe, especially Southern Europe, uh, 
has seen a decline in demand and they are finding new home for product now. Right. I'm just a uh, second question on the uh, U.S. pricing front. So in your opening remarks, you alluded that uh, on a QoQ basis, the prices have gone down so by about fifty sixty dollars. So uh, will these uh, prices prevail when it comes to the uh, re renewal of contracts uh, in the month of January? I think uh, I think the market is still fairly volatile in a, and in a state of flux. And as Mukund mentioned, we'll probably get a better idea when we talk again Q3 as to, you know, where the prices might settle. But uh, as we also mentioned, I think the team is today focused on making sure that all of the contracting is closed as soon as possible. Right. And uh, if I can squeeze in one last one, uh, in terms of uh, all the uh, different uh, geographies, uh, which are the uh, segments which are doing well and which are the segments which are uh, lagging behind? So I think across the board, uh, sustainability-driven segments like lithium, solar, glass are doing well and are continuing to grow, in fact, growing in double digits. Uh, within the more traditional segments, I think the one that's been impacted is certainly float glass, primarily due to uh, slow housing and residential starts and construction activity in most of the geographies. And as Mukund mentioned, there's been some recent softening in container glass demand. But that we believe might might bounce back perhaps faster than what we'll see in the float class segment. Sure, sir. Uh, thanks for answering all the questions and best of luck and uh, Diwali wishes to the entire team. Thank you. Thank you. On the CapEx, uh, broadly, just to address the question which was there, uh, beyond the current cycle, where what we mentioned, the expansion of salt from 1.5 to 1.8, broadly we expect that number is to about 400 odd crores. The Sodash number in India from 1 to 1.3 is about 1,000 odd crores. And uh, the Kenya and US put together, uh, which is uh, broadly our uh, point uh, uh, six expansion uh, million tons will be about 200 to broadly 200 million uh, dollars. So you could take all put together about 3,000 odd crores spread over, spread over next three years for the expansion beyond the current cycle. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, when, as you mentioned uh, that our contracts, uh, we are working with the contract for the next year for both the UK and the US market. So, taking into account the current average prices which are prevailing, the spot prices, and our contracted value for last year, what's the current differential between the two and uh, what can we read uh, from, from this data? In terms of the data, as Zareed has explained, I think the domestic contracting in U.S. and in U uh, U U.S. Uh, and U.K. Uh, I think it's more or less. I think should uh, be stable. That is what our conditions tell us. In terms of exports, there is a bit of volatility, which Zareed has explained, and the volatility is fairly uh, more acute in Southeast Asia than in uh, South America. And on that, the contracts are still getting uh, closed and, and getting closed underway. And uh, uh, we do uh, know that uh, some of the low-end prices we've seen may not prevail in the market for, for these contracts. But where they will settle, we'll be in a better position to highlight to all of you in the next quarter uh, when we come back for the results. In the Indian operations, we are seeing there's this decline in margins uh, and we are trending lower. So is, is this attributed mainly to due to the this unabating imports and the lower realization only or or why are the margins trending lower for Indian operations now? Yeah, the main issue in India is not demand. The main issue is the high level of imports of low priced material, which hopefully will abate and reduce uh, going forward. But I think we have seen uh, uh, major increase in imports and as I said, the share of imports has jumped from broadly 14% to 28% over the last four quarters. And uh, and that too happening at a fairly uh, very low price and that has depressed the local market conditions. Uh, and uh, we will have to wait and watch whether this will continue or we would uh, uh, claw back some of these changes. 